Thank you very much for, for your invitation. And I might say I'm very honored and grateful for the trust that you have put in me for this presentation. So thank you very much, Jérôme. I'll try to live up to that. I'll do my best. So uh, first thing, um, before uh, I begin, I took some notes on the preceding presentation by Olivier, Olivier Ragueneau, who is just in front of me. And I would like to thank him very much for, uh, for doing this, this uh, I would say this, uh, so to, I, don't, I don't know how to say it in English, but to uh, défricher, ce travail, how do you say défricher, ça, ça commence mal. Uh, défricher, défricher, help me, um, to open the way for us. Uh, and for what we are going to propose now, because it's really outside of, uh, of what is done with an institution. We, we work with institution, but not, with, not inside institutions. And, the, and we share a common question at the beginning. The common question was how, and this is something I shared in my, in my work when I was, of course, in the Ministry of, uh, of Ecology. It's how to involve people in the core construction of knowledge. Uh, this is what you said, but not any knowledge. A knowledge that is meaningful. And it is meaningful because it is connected with the condition of habitability on the long term of the earth. That's why it's meaningful. And that's how and it's, it's knowledge that can help us become more terrestrial. This is what you, the words that you use mentioning uh, the words that Bruno Latour had put forward. Uh, it was at the, the Gifford lectures the first time that terrestrial came up. It was in 2013, if I remember properly. And um, we share this question. And the way that we try to to work on it, to respond to, to, this, to this question, is to, by taking an a, a position or, uh, a, a, that, is a, that is the following. It's like an hypothesis. And the idea is like, maybe what we should do today is uh, in order to induce a transformation that would be a form of reorientation of our relationship uh, to the Earth, with the Earth, uh, is not to focus so much on knowledge, but to focus on experience and practices. Uh, we, were think, we, were, we, we, are, we are thinking that maybe we should not consider that knowledge should be the condition of change but maybe, or, and transformation, but maybe what we should think, what we should try out is find out if knowledge is not the result of transformation, what comes out of a transformative process. And a knowledge that comes out of a transformative process might be what you call wisdom. So we are working in this field. Not a knowledge as a pre technical precondition of action, but a, knowledge, a transformative knowledge that comes, uh, that, is, that, is, that is emerging from transform lived transformative processes. And this is something that you share through wisdom rather than uh, data. So that's, that's what I'm going to talk about today. How, how, did we, how did we work in this field? And the second point is that I want to say as a preliminary before I start, so I took a few notes not to forget, is, um, as Jérôme said, it would be interesting, because that's why you invited me, I suppose, is uh, to, to say a few words about the, my professional career. And it's true that uh, uh, what is specific, I believe you invited me, because I quit nearly every uh, job I had in the administration for the last 25 years. And so that's, that's what makes me, <laughs> to say that's a good guy to, to invite, this guy has quit everything. So, so <laughs> and he's still there, you know, so well, I'm curious. And so the, the thing is, uh, I quit, yes, because there was a question asked uh, to you, Olivier, about the frictions in the institutions. And should, when I was in the Ministry of Ecology, I could not, I, I, was, I didn't have the energy anymore uh, to, to defend myself against this friction, to defend my freedom. I, I couldn't do it anymore. It, I was exhausted, and, I, and so that, that was not good for me, for my health, I would say. So I had to stop. Uh, and it was the same when I was uh, in Ecole Normale Supérieure de Lyon, where I'm still in, connected through Institut Michel Serre, but that's different. It's an it's independent uh, research institution uh, as NGO. But, but uh, it was the same. The resistance, the frictions were too much. And so, I, I, and so this is why I stopped. And then I realized that, uh, that in fact, it, it, it was necessary that I would stop because the changes that we are facing, they are existential. So if we are not ready to pay the cost in our own life of the processes of uh, transformation that we advocate for others, nobody will follow us. So we have to bear some cost. And all transformation has a cost. So we are going to face choices and uh, we will not, they will not be easy. And getting into a transformative process is not something comfortable. 
It's something that is really, that can hurt. Emotions come up. Um, resistance, beliefs, you, you are vulnerable. You face your own vulnerability through change. And this is why it's so difficult and it's why it's so easy to be in a situation where you have either working in the logic of interest for globalization, as you said, or logic of identity for populism. You see, that's because we refuse uh, the risk of transformation because it, it has a cost and it's uncomfortable. But it brings a lot of joy. And it brings a lot of regeneration in ourselves and in our relationship with people. And so I would like to be able to share this joy with you today as much as I can. And uh, the last thing I will not be talking about uh, is uh, the Institut Michel Serre. Uh, so I'll just say a few words because they do great things in the Institute Michel Serre. And uh, as on the presentation I did to put my, the, the, my affiliation to this, I will just say a few words. The Institute Michel Serre, uh, I joined them in the idea to help uh, to try and make of the contrat naturel, the natural contract, uh, an actual operational, as you would say, actionable, um, political transformative program. How do we do that? And in the Institut Michel Serre, we tried to work on a new generation of indicators. So there was a discussion about uh, ecosystem accounting just a minute ago. And we say, like, it's not sufficient to have ecosystem, ac ecosystem accounts. What we need is, in fact, to have integrated approach where you can con connect human health, social health, and ecosystemic health. And uh, how do you do that? And that's not one health. We called it common health. You see some people asking, you know, how is it different from planetary or one health? It's very different because the social health dimension is not anymore a black box. And in fact, the articulation between human health and ecological health goes through the redesign and reorganization of the way we, make, we, we create societies together. So that's at what the, the, and that's why it is the contrat naturel. That's why it is a, a way to make the contrat naturel something that we could operate through new system of indicators and methodologies and so on. And that's that's what we are, we are, I would say, we are committed to uh, in the Institut Michel Serre. So that is, is something I wanted to mention because I will not be uh, talking about the Institut Michel Serre. The other thing I want to mention too before we begin. Uh, is a, it's a very long presentation, and Benoit is very worried. And, that, and all these four the previous talks at the beginning is making you worried. Is that it's not my own presentation, of course. Uh, I have been working on this presentation uh, intensely in the last few days with uh, with Benoit, Benoit Verja, that is here, and that is here. And uh, it is also the result of a, a very uh, an intrinsically collective work that we've done in different, in different fields that I'm going to uh, show right now. And, uh, and, 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 and it's a way to, to transmit to you many contributions uh, that have been uh, in somehow distributed through these different experiments. So this is, uh, this is something which is a collective, and I try to be faithful to this uh, collective and the trust uh, they gave me to make this presentation. So let's begin. I'm going to very briefly uh, introduce uh, the different case uh, studies or uh, social ecological experiments, if one might say, that we, we are connecting with, just to use uh, different vocabularies. Um, the, first, the first one uh, is about uh, uh, La Ferme de la Motte. These are different territories and experiments. They're going to be, uh, I'm not going to comment them right now, but just give a few elements so that you, you know where, where, what we're going to talk about is coming from. Uh, the fa so this is the Ferme de la Motte. It's, um, it's a territory that, uh, that, that uh, we have been working with, with uh, um, the CNRS, uh, the Centre des Politiques de la Terre. We had launched an action there about seven years ago uh, under the, the title Ecologie Pirate. So there's, an, there's a site there. And uh, the project of the territory, of this territory, is, uh, and the group and collective of people we've been working with, is basically to try to, to imagine what it would be to live beyond property, profit, and oil. And in order to do that, they are, we, we are experimenting different uh, uh, ways to uh, inhabit differently the territory, to renew our attention to what makes the territory habitable. And so the work in the Ecologie Pirate was about uh, renewing uh, the categories, the methodologies, the protocol of a territorial inquiry. Um, then there's another experiment that happened in the Drôme area, where I've been working on the, on the Drôme territory and the Drôme Valley, and especially in the Diwa, which is at the bottom of the valley of the Drôme, uh, close to the, to the source, to, to, the, to the origin of the Drôme. And uh, this was a project that, uh, it was the last project I, I supported before leaving the Ministry uh, of Ecological Transition. I left in 2017, the project happened in 2018. And it's a project where uh, Kogi Mama, indigenous expert, 
experts, as we say in the best, um, have come in the Drome area uh, to confront uh, their knowledge and their way of acquiring and producing knowledge to a group of about 30 scientists and uh, the Institut Michel Serre and the CNRS Ladis uh, were partners on the scientific side of this experiment. And that was, a, and so we call it like it's like a transcaping, no, a transfiguration of a landscape. So you see there, for example, what you can see is not only walking, walking with a mama, which is a practice of inquiry and and how and learning from seeing and watching, but you see also a work done by a very fine anthropologist, whom unfortunately I forgot the name, uh, but who's also a talented artist, is a representation of a, of a landscape of a of a drum, of a valley that we've been working on, and this is for how the mama see it and uh, and they and they tell a whole different story about this landscape about the connections between well, between the bodies of the, of the earth and because they have an approach to the earth as a territorial body as a, as a subject a territory as a subject as a person and that is that is important to mention for the presentation I'm making now and then there was uh, another experiment. It's like a chronology of experiments I'm just presenting. There's no specific logical order there. Uh, it's another experiment that uh, I did with uh, Ecole Urbaine de Lyon. The Ecole Urbaine de Lyon uh, was, uh, it, it was uh, led, is led, I don't know exactly was, is, uh, but uh, with, uh, by Michel Lusso. And uh, the idea was to, was to develop a new, a new form of training where we would uh, try and find out how to, to learn with the people we train what we don't know what to do uh, and how to do it. So to design, in fact, a process of inquiry and uh, forecasting exercises uh, on one side, it was Rive de Gier. And, uh, and uh, that, that is something we did uh, in 2020. It's important also because you'll see in the presentation that it, we make some references to this kind of approach by training for inquiry. And then as another project in, in, uh, in Saint Saint-Denis, uh, which name is Zone Sensible. Zone Sensible is a project that has been developed on, uh, by Olivier Darnay, who is an artist and a, and a designer. And it's uh, one hectare uh, of, uh, of a former uh, lettuce uh, monoculture uh, in, the, in the Petite Couronne Parisienne uh, that has been uh, transformed into an art center, but is all, which is also an urban farm. And uh, this is a way to, to try and re Inventing practices of, of making city of of, of, urbanize, of urban, I would say, to become urban and, with, and bring nature, natural processes within the city, and so it's the Parti Poétique which has done that. Done that, and on this on this place, because we subtracted this space from the logic of speculation, we have created a lab, uh, and, and in this lab we try to measure the added value of subtractions, and then we realize and we realize that uh, this kind of lab was exactly what we needed for sobriety, and uh, to try and measure added values of subtractions. So this is something we are doing right now. It's a project which is supported by Fondation de France. And we did uh, in, the, in this project an exhibition in July and up to October on transformative practices uh, on, the, on this site. And then there's another site, just quick pre descriptive presentation, which is in fact uh, the, the place where we started working with, with, uh, with Benoit, which is in the Montagne Limousine, and which is linked to um, uh, um, um, a project developed by a local NGO named Cartier Rouge, which engaged into the issue of cohabiting with great predators, and specifically with wolves, which return on this territory. So we'll see later on about, I go more in depth on this territory. So all these territories, as you can see here, all these, all these projects, um, they have in common that, and I, this is a bit abstract, but uh, I, don't need, I don't think I need to go through everything I wrote here and read it aloud, but uh, basically what they have in common is the fact that they, they all share the same understanding of what is happening to the way, what, what experience means in the Anthropocene. Um, the, the elements that, that, that I put here to illustrate that, uh, you could have experimented very easily through some kind of speculative walk uh, in uh, Reset Modernity of Bruno Latour in 2013 in Karlsruhe. Reset Modernity was a way to tell us what the Anthropocene has done uh, to what we call the modern experience, the condition of, of, of experience. And it is clear that uh, I'm just reporting some of these points that we share, but what is important here is to notice that basically we can't go on looking into experience in the Anthropocene in the same way as we did in order to produce the same kind of knowledge. 
for example, it is not possible today to distinguish, a f to, to analyze a phenomena or by using the categories, very useful, it's something I'm just saying because it's an evident, but it's good to say it, that are nature and culture. This is clear, we can't do that. But we still make policy by these categories. <laughs> so it's not something which is that we know it, we understand it, but we still act by them. Uh, and reproduce our institution by them. So it's a problem. Uh, we, we can't today think about, we can't say that we are outside of nature because we are living in a global experiment that we have created by rejecting uh, fossil, uh, uh, emitting uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and so on and so on. So all these elements that were, that were uh, the elements that were pivotal and structural of a modern experience are in fact uh, uh, obsolete today. And in these, in these projects, you understand why, we sh they share this understanding. And what they also share is the consequences of this understanding. The consequences of this understanding is that, in fact, we are living now in a situation of irreductible or uh, uh, radical uncertainty. And this radical uncertainty, we live to what it meant, when I say at the beginning here, because what is at stake here, habitability, there's no more long term. You might say there's no more short term uh, in, in relationship to human action, I mean. Not, not, not uh, in an objective way. I'm talking with people who know what long-term mean, so I do not pretend to give a, a definition. But when I say that, I say that for, uh, in, rela in relation to the framework, the temporal framework for which we act, uh, of our actions, uh, there's no more long-term. Because you see this event, this anomaly here that happened by 50 degrees Celsius in British Columbia last year, in July, th this event, in fact, is something that was predicted to happen around 2100. It was not something that was predicted to happen yesterday. And uh, so anything can happen right now. And this creates a situation, you see, we keep opening the newspaper, you have the COP news writing coming up right now, and it's always the same thing. Scientists are appalled, they are afraid, they, they, they didn't know that was possible, and so on and so on. Exception has become the rule, not only in our states, but also in the state of nature somehow. Exception has become the rule everywhere. So we are in this situation here. And in order to face this situation, we need to have an approach that will help us, as we say in the Institut Michel Serre, huh, with Olivier Amon, who has developed approaches around, the, around this work, we need to be able to take into account, in fact, the capacity to, to, to absorb, uh, to, to, to withstand um, large and wide fluctuations. And so uh, the, 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 the approach that we need to have to experience is an approach that will help us uh, to, to have this, this, uh, this stance and this position uh, towards, uh, towards uh, the, uh, amplifying the amplification, the exponential amplification of fluctuations. And the other point that these, uh, that these experiences share is uh, 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 the fact that they value what has been traditionally excluded from the field of uh, scientific modern knowledge, I would say, in, uh, to make it very, very literal and caricatural. If you want, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, to, to make a point here. I'm just trying to say, like, look, they're going to be very careful of what usually is considered to, uh, to be an anecdote, to be a sensation, to be something which is outside of the scope of serious knowledge making. And uh, this extension, this is Anat Singh in her book on the mushroom at the end of the world, gave very good analysis of uh, this idea, of this appearance of scalability through which we try, through laboratory uh, artifacts, to try to, to squeeze nature into in order to squeeze things out of it, uh, squeeze things out of nature. And so this is, this is uh, I'm not reading it, I'm just, I suppose you can read this, but you can see that the logic of scalability is in fact a logic which is turned towards uh, performance, control and reproduction, uh, of, uh, and, and so an amplification. And uh, this is something that, uh, that, that, that in fact puts aside uh, anything uh, that could be in fact considered as, a, as a, in fact producing a bifurcation, uh, a, a, a novelty, something that would in fact be like a, like a, a stone, a small stone in, 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 in the, the logic of, a, of a, how say, reproduction and transmission of, of a knowledge. And that, that is uh, something that you can understand through this kind of, of, of representation. As you see here, the logic of scalability, in fact, is like um, using the screen of, a, of a, the knowing subject in order to take from the flux of experience only the element that it's going to be able to put to its own purpose.
And I mean, it's quite clear that the logic here is to find the causes in order to, able to be able to reproduce uh, the elements that we need. I mean, this is so evident for you that I, I'm a bit ashamed that I go too much into details. But this is this is a way of uh, of thinking. It's not simply um, uh, it's not simply that it's not a criticism of a scientific practice. It's just a way of thinking and uh, and making knowledge. It's a very it's a very pertinent knowledge. It's not a criticism. This it's just a way of functioning, and this way of functioning has been extremely powerful because we wouldn't be here if this is if it's not no so efficient and, and, and working out and it hadn't worked out but but you see that it is based on on on, on a logic of reduction and amplification here which is which is in fact not a way to 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 be able to um open ourselves to the, the real flux uh, of experience, to the totality of experience. So what these territories and experiments that I'm talking about, I'm going to go into detail a bit more in a minute, share, is that they have understood that in order to go to be robust, to develop robustness uh, in our strategies and our way of inhabiting territory, what we need to do is also to thicken uh, um, a capacity uh, to take in experience, if I may say it that way. It's a bit uh, awkward, but... Uh, and one example has been given to me to try and make it clear uh, by, uh, what is, by uh, Olivier Amand. Olivier Amand wrote a nice paper uh, that you can read. It's uh, Plants show, the, show Us the Light. And uh, it's uh, based on an article on science, uh, came out Science 2020, uh, about trying to, uh, to analyze uh, why it is that uh, the plants are green. And they are green because they are, max they are, they are prioritizing the management of fluctuation on the logic of efficiency. Well, the plants would be black <laughs> if they were on the logic of efficiency. And so what we need to do is it's about the same thing. You see, when you are, the plants are, doing, are, are taking in um, uh, fluctuations on the, on, on, on the wavelength, which are on, on both extremes of the spectra. And so the, what we need to do when we work on it, what, what we pr propose to, to work on, as this is a metaphor, is to try and do the same thing for our experiences. To, uh, when we go into the experience, in fact, to try and... and, and uh, and, and get into the full spectrum of the experience. And this is the recommendation of William James. Huh? I, did not, I did not read this, but this would be a principle, what he calls pure experience, is the idea that we will go back to experience and only work on the experience. And then by that I mean lived and shared experience. It's not an abstract experience that we talk about, it's something that we live and that we share. And so we have to create practices in order to be able to get into this flock of experience and to get, in fact, not only knowledge from it, but transformation from it. And you see that this is a totally different approach. If you, you're not in a logic where you extract elements in order to amplify them, to simplify action, forecasting, control, and so on. Yeah, so that's the logic of performance, of optimization, but when I saw the scalability. Yeah, you are in a logic, in fact, of transformation, of transformation of yourself and the world, in the, in, in, and this cannot be separate. Because we know in the Anthropocene that we can't separate ourselves from the planet, from the world, from the, 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 the medium, the ecological medium that we depend on. So here, we are, what you see here is that if you try and, and try and get into the experience, you're not like a transcendental subject or, or knowing subject with instrumentations and tools that is going to try to abstract information, but you'll be positioning yourself more like through some kinds of practices, that's not instruments, but it's, it's a way to try and, and see how we can work maybe together these approaches, through practices, you're going not to create, you're going to, to be more and more present. So you're not in the ego transcendental that selects, you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a becoming present to what is happening, to the ilia, to what is happening. It might feel poetic, but uh, that's the best way we find it to put it. And, uh, and, and this is something collective. It's not only a, a personal experience. The field of experience that we are going to inhabit through these practices and the dispositive and, and situation of intensification of experience, this field of experience is transpersonal. Personal. It means that it's done with a collective of people and it can be done with lots of people. And we, did have, we, we worked with more than 70 or 80 people in Feltin in May, but we did not talk about this at the beginning. So it can be done with lots of people at the, at the level of a territory. And, uh, uh, it is also including other beings than humans. I mean, it's also this transpersonal field because there are interactions with all sorts of other beings that are taken into the field and part of the field of experience and contributing to that field. So this is something here that, that is, in fact, what it does is induce, in fact, not a, immediately a knowledge. What it will going to induce is transformations. 
into us. We're going to, oh, we're going to say, oh, uh, this is happening and this is happening and the dispositif is going to help us make sense out of that. So it doesn't just happen to you and me, it's not like des goûts et des couleurs. It's a dispositif that where we each bring in what is happening in a, in a methodical way, and there's a method, you'll see this in a minute, uh, then it makes sense. And this produces, oh sorry, and this uh, produces knowledge from transformation. So that's, uh, and these, these are, that's why the presentation was named uh, Art of Transformation or Art of Effects, depending on the different titles that it has received. So we're not into looking into the causes to reproduce, but learning from the effects. That, would, that is the word that uh, we are using. It's nothing new. It's just a way to describe the, the practices that we had on, this territory, on these territories. And so, if you do this, you have, uh, this is, and this is a work in progress, huh? don't think that this is something we improvised somehow in order to be able to share in the most uh, uh, efficient way, <laughs> that that's, we were looking for efficiency here, unfortunately, but, uh, the, the, the elements of our, of, of our reflections on, on this kind of, of, of approach. Getting from the production of knowledge, of scalable knowledge, to transform the transformation of practices, and I don't think I have time to go into any of all, all these um, or these subcategories here, imply a, sh a shift in intention, it's a shift of paradigm. So it's a shift in intention, a shift in posture or in position, a shift in the questions that we ask, uh, in the conditions in order to, to, uh, to, 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 to develop or elaborate uh, to, uh, uh, that we need in order to enter into these, into these, um, into these uh, practices, because in fact a production of knowledge is also a practice and it requires certain conditions. So the conditions are different. And, uh, and the, the way we value what we get out of it is different. The processes of valuation are different. And so, of course, this is very important because we were talking the other day at Zone Sensible with the uh, director of uh, um, uh, La Fondation de France, and, uh, and she was telling us that uh, uh, they have very many difficulties find, trying to design uh, an indicator uh, that could measure the transformative potential uh, of, of projects. So how do we do that? How do we de design? We, can't, we can only do that if we have possibility to experiment and reproduce and try again and see how it works. So we can't just uh, decrete that this, these would be the indicators. So we need a practice in order to do that. And these kind of, uh, of social of experiments that I'm talking about, uh, they, they can help us learn how to do that. So uh, it's, 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 this is not going to be uh, scalable knowledge, but it's going to be wisdom learned from doing. You see, that's a different way of putting it. So I go into a case study. The case study is, we said we were a bit worried about the case study, but I'll get into it directly. Uh, the case study is a very local, follow, my, follow me on this. This is not, this is something that emerged as a practice on the territory. It did not exist before. This kind of approach was is something that was created or co-created by a whole group of people, and you might see it better here, uh, within, within a, a context of uh, mediation in order to find out how is it that we could do better than other territories in France uh, in cohabiting with wolves. You know, if the problem with wolves is that we have invested lots of money in coexistence. And you know coexistence, the best way to coexist with another being is never to meet him. That's, uh, that's uh, I would say, the, the, the accomplishment of coexistence. And unfortunately, we do meet wolves. So what do we do today? We kill them. And the more they are wolves, the more we kill them. And this is a part of the management of our coexistence with large predators going on with sheep guarding dogs and so on and so on. And it's, so we find ourselves in a situation where, we, where, where, where we, we are, in fact, killing more and more wolves as there are more and more wolves, and, this, and we're calling this coexistence. This is something very contradictory. And we are, so we need to, to, to change our attitude and maybe invest in cohabitation. And this is not something which is technical. This is something which means addressing a new culture, being transformed by the process of getting into a relationship with other beings and what it does to the medium, ecological medium that we both share, cohabitation, co-creating our habitat. This is basically a case study of, for the biosphere that we, that we live everywhere. So that was good for us to work on this. And, uh, so, when we did this practice, the whole idea of a practice is to get people uh, into uh, the capacity to find in themselves, that's the second level of, of experiment, the, uh, the knowledge, to produce knowledge on wolf relationships. Because if we rely only on the knowledge of experts, you see where we are? 
conflicts, polarization of society, who kills them all, you know, like uh, the wolf and the Arab, the wolf and, yes, that's it, everywhere. Everywhere in Europe, everywhere in the States, you put always the, the wolf, it's the Indians and the wolves, or everything, each time you try and find a, a stigmatized a part of a human population, it's a wolf you have to deal with. So what, what do we do? What do we do? We say like expert knowledge has not has done not very little to this uh, cultural uh, prejudice that we have against wolves. Uh, it didn't work. So we need to create, in fact, another knowledge, a non-expert knowledge that will come from what? Because people cannot study wolves and so on. They don't see them. Wolves are very shy animals and so on. So how do you get this knowledge? You can only get it if you find the practices, and you can't stay hours and hours observing wolves, you know, waiting for to see an interaction. That's, that's, not, that's a job, that's naturalist or a hobby, but it's, it's not something pe anyone can do. So in order for people to become expert on wolves, to develop a knowledge so that they know what is good and bad and how they can take a position which will be outside of ideology, we try to imagine a practice that puts them in a situation of learning together what it means to be in a situation of wolf attack on uh, attack of wolves on, uh, on, on sheep or cows or whatever. And uh, that's the whole idea. And so, in order to do that, first, you, I'm going to be very quick on this one because uh, I, seem, I seem to be a bit late. But stop me, uh, t give me quotes so that I know where I am because I don't, I don't realize, I'm just going on. So, in order to do this, you put people in a situation where they're trying to understand what's going on, situating. Then you put them in a state where they gain presence. No, you have to put them in a presence to open to, to the field of experience. And then you have different stages. I can be very quick, in fact, on that. You have different stages. In order to bring people, this is important to show, to bring people in a situation where after getting into the wolf or the, the character of, a, of the animal character that they're going to live, uh, they get into interactive, interspecific relationships and then they take notes, like as in chapters, for themselves. And then there's a debrief of all this through, uh, beyond personal feedback, through an integrative process, which is done by two by two and then by, by small groups. So I gave you the whole idea, and I'm going to rush through that. So, so, you, so this is, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I've been too, too, too much talkative. So you get people preparing, you give them the equipment in order to get into their roles. Uh, you put them into a movement where they're going to in interact in situation, uh, enact in the situation, the, uh, the relation between species. Um, you have a personal feedback where in silence, huh, they, everybody keeps in silence, nobody talks. That's very important. And, but people write. That's okay. And so people take notes when they're told, when they get out of their little, slightly modified state of consciousness of being an animal, they come back and write down and so on. Then they, they do this for themselves. Then they do this, so this is the kind of introspection that we help them to do. And then they integrate to two by two, and then by small groups. So I'll be too, a bit quick like this. And then new questions come up. And there's, and there's a production of knowledge through the regeneration of a kind of questions that can come up in the, for, for, to, to, to address the issue of cohabitation. And then there's a real process with farmers, hunters, locals, inhabitants, political makers, designers, artists, that is happening. And the culture is emerging. So that's a, an act of cultural creation. And that's very interesting through a transpersonal memory that is constituted by, with the people. And then, of course, for these practices, you will need, you understand that you will need all sorts of arts, like you have arts for instrumentation to calibrate your instruments. We will need arts to calibrate. So we'll need arts of immersion, of presence, of effects, of integration, of, of anecdotes, of experience, all the, of telling, and so on. All these arts are necessary in order to, de to be necessary to be developed as skills to be able to become better in practice because the practice needs to be practiced. So you don't do it one time, you do it many times. It's like uh, playing football, rugby, or, or bridge. So you need to do it many times. And so this is something that you'll develop skills. And these skills in your life will be very useful. These skills will, in fact, in induce in society a capacity for transformative practices. This is going to develop a, a social intelligence of what it means transformation and, and, and transformative practices. This is the, the intention of this kind of experiment and why we, should, we want to do, to do it often. And if you think about that, you need a different kind of infrastructure, infrastructure in order to do this. And uh, the kind of infrastructures that you might need to do that uh, are, are, are very important. Because you can't do that anywhere. And as you can't do it in institutions, because this is how I began the quote, I can't be in an institution, doesn't work out. So where do you do it? 
So you have to invent, in fact, the conditions of these practices. And uh, if you think about this, we try to, to, to do it in a very, very quick way. But you see that uh, if you think about the principles of scalability and non-scalability, the logic of efficiency and robustness and the logic of thickening of the experience, uh, when you are at the level of what I'm not seeing called the plantation, which is the monoculture, and I'm not going to describe all the characteristics of the monoculture, no time anymore, of a laboratory, you are in fact uh, in a logic where you, 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 are, you are on the other side of the kind of knowledge and practices that we are looking for. What, we are going to, what I'm going to talk about here is the notion of territorial. Uh, the territory as a person is what uh, the Kogi live in. So we try to give you from the plantation to the Kogi, uh, or the indigenous approach to territory, uh, some form of uh, understanding of the kind of infrastructure we are looking for, and which would be connected with critical zone, because it seems that uh, the, the observatories are in between these kind of knowledges. And addressing at least epistemologically this issue of transferability of knowledge. What we have here, what I'm going to conclude on is, as I can't do that, is, is a kind of territory that we might be, sorry, I'll just go back here, the kind of that, an, an illustration of what a territory call might be. And this is the territory called de la Motte, the first experience, uh, the first case I, I, I showed at the beginning of, uh, of this presentation. Here, you, ha you see that it takes time to create a territory. I'm very quick now. It takes time to create a territory, a territory call. It takes years, trust, uh, and living there. You have to live there. You can't do a territory call if you don't have people who live there, who are connected with others, who are uh, engaging into transformative questioning with them, and so on. So this takes time and commitment. The second aspect is that what we managed to do is like phase the, the stages. How do we do it? So we can reproduce the gesture, the practice uh, of, of, of making a territory call. We have been exploring, in fact, how to do it. And this is how concretely it has been done on the territoire de la Motte. I do not have time to go into all the, the elements, but it's just to suggest that it has been done and we can do it again. And uh, when this is this work of institution of a, of a constitution, institution of a territory, and, 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 and it has been put into place, and when inquiries have been, practices of inquiry have been developed with the inhabitants in order to define the kind of questions and research and um, work that we want to do on the territory, then you can have une charte du territoire école, which, which is signed, and it could be a network of territoire école that could happen all the way in France. And this is what we're working on, a network of territoire école. And we begin, we have already the charter, the practices, the places, and we're connecting them through training, through inquiry projects. That's the design that we have now. And uh, once you, and you see what a territory call can produce, a territory call will start mapping all the transformative practices that we might need to address in a robust way uh, the challenges of the Anthropocene. And this is how they can be uh, useful uh, to and maybe contribute to what you are also doing uh, in your networks. Thank you very much.